friends. Hi, friends. Last week. friends. Last week we talked about our new virtual Sunday school where you can go online and participate in songs and games and lessons and there's even a section where your whole family can do a lesson together. Now in October we're starting a new series called Road Trip and during this session we will be learning all about the Ten Commandments, which are the rules that God gave to Moses for us to live by. The first two rules are put God first and do not worship idols. When we put God first, He is the most important thing in our lives. And avoiding idols means that we're not worshiping anything other than Him. Now sometimes we like to have special things and there's not a problem with having special things. It's just if we put them above God. We might decide that we want to have a big boat or a house. We might like our house the best and do all these things for our house. Or an airplane would be something cool to have. Have you ever thought about an airplane? It's big and you can fly places in it. An airplane. But wants us to have nice things and it's okay but we always need to make sure that we put God above all those things and we live the life that he wants us to have and we focus on him and he is at the center of our lives so think about the things that are important to you but always put God first let us pray. Dear God, thank you for guiding us and leading us. And please help us to always put you first in our lives so that we can follow your will. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. We're glad to see y'all today. Everybody, like, wave hands. 
All right, clap a couple times. Stomp your feet a little bit. It's, it's a little cool in here, and there's a reason for that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill you in, and if you're watching at home, we're going to tell you what's going on today. Today is our first Sunday, uh, back to in-person worship, and it's going to be a little bit different than what we're used to. So we can't shout. I know that y'all are shouting Methodists, right? Um, we can't shout. We're not going to sing along in the sanctuary, but we will have music. We will invite you to clap, to stomp. Um, you can wave your hands if you want. I know that Methodists only wave about this high, but if you're feeling a little charismatic, go a little bit higher, okay? Um, we're going to worship God together in a little bit of a different style. We are grateful that you're here with us today. We're grateful for those that are watching online as well, uh, and, and we're going to make the most of this. Um, we have a few different things coming up this week. I was actually going through and telling Beth just how many different things that we've got coming up that are different than what's normal. Uh, we're actually catching up on a lot of the things that we didn't do back in the spring and the summer, where this Saturday we're having our confirmation service. It'll be at 9 o'clock in the morning. It'll be out on the front lawn, weather permitting. Uh, so bring a lawn chair. Come, take pictures, enjoy this celebration. We've had 13 confirmands in confirmation now for the better part of a year. They have been in a holding pattern. They have continued to meet. That's a long time for sixth graders. Uh, but we're going to confirm and, and baptize those students this Saturday at 9 o'clock. We'd love for you to come out and be a part of that. Uh, make sure you bring a blanket. Make sure you bring a jacket. It's going to be a little chilly, sort of like it is this morning. Uh, we're also having charge conference coming up. It is my responsibility, my responsibility to announce it at least twice publicly. Charge conference is next Sunday at 4 o'clock. It's supposed to be at Ackworth United Methodist Church, but we're waiting on final word. It may also be over Zoom. Now, the important meeting, not that that charge conference meeting isn't important, but the, the meeting where we actually vote on our leadership for the next year, on our candidates for ministry, on, on all those sorts of things, is going to be tomorrow night. It'll be our steering team meeting. It'll be on Zoom. So be looking for an email with a Zoom link. You're welcome to come and attend that to participate in that meeting as we pre present that information. Uh, and then one last reminder, uh, tomorrow, in, in case you haven't yet, Tomorrow is the deadline to, to register to vote in the state of Georgia. We want to make sure that everybody is registered to vote. And if you haven't yet, you can check on the Secretary of State's website or you, you can register on the website as well. So just a little friendly reminder. As we start worship this morning, will you bow with me in prayer? God, we give thanks to be in your house today, to be able to to stand just a little bit closer to the altar, to gather around your table. And though it's a little bit different, we know, God, that you hear the words that we speak out loud as well as the words that are deep within our hearts. Hear our prayers, hear our praises today in whatever form they present themselves and from wherever it is that we worship. God, as we worship today, fill our hearts with joy. Fill us with your word that as we gather together, we may be enriched by that word and sent out into a world that needs to hear that message. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to say I'm so happy to see your smiling eyes here this morning. <laughs> Sing loudly with your hearts, but not with your voices this morning as we lift our voices together. <laughs>
We should have had y'all stand for that, right? We're a little out of routine. Um, it, I'm going to lead us in prayer this morning. We have uh, all sorts of prayer requests that go out every week. Um, we'd invite you to add to those prayer requests. If you're here with us in person this morning, we, we haven't handed anything out except for communion elements. So, you didn't get a bulletin. You didn't get a communication card. What we want to encourage you to do, we know that you're here because you signed in. Those of y'all that are online, we want you to sign in as well. We want you to complete our communication form online. If you have a prayer concern, you can email me. You can email the church. You can fill out that online communication form. Let us know how we can be in prayer for you. Uh, those prayers definitely do make a big, big difference. And it's another way that we can stay in touch with everybody, uh, even, even being a little bit more apart than normal. Um, I'm going to lead us in prayer. And like we do most Sunday mornings, we're going to pray together the Lord's Prayer. What I'm going to invite you to do is to, to lift your voices. We'll have the words on the screen but to lift them softly, okay? God hears us when we are just a breath away, uh, but to pray those. And, and the, the key thing here, I don't think I ever thought I would say this in church, the key thing here is not to be too loud because then we don't share as many germs. So uh, we're going to pray together the Lord's Prayer that's found in the hymnal as well as on the screen. Let's bow together in prayer. God, it is so beautiful to be in your presence. It is marvelous to be close to you. And as some of us enter into this worship space today, we acknowledge that this is only one place that we can come into close contact with you. This is only one place where our prayers are heard. But we know that when we are abroad, when we are away, when we are separated from all others, you are right there with us. But God, how beautiful it is to throw open the doors of your church and to proclaim the good news for the world to hear. We pray, God, that this good news would be lived out in our midst, that it would be lived out in our lives so that those who don't yet know Christ those that are bearing the hurts of the world, those that are simply lost, would find in the way we live our lives hope and peace, a joy that cannot be squashed by any bad news, and a love that endures to the end of time. God, for too long we have misrepresented you. For too long we have lived in sin. For too long, we have been apart from you. Today, draw us back in as the doors of your church are wide open. So are the, heart, so are the doors of our hearts. Cleanse us from sin. Forgive us for the ways that we have done wrong. And today as we pray, give us a new start. As men, as women, as children, God, give us a new start as a church as well. That as we reinitiate these ministries and we live into a new normal, we pray that your spirit would move in a new way. Hear us today as we pray for our community, for our homes, for our nation, for our world. And God, by your word, inspire us to go out into that world and bring hope and change. God, we offer to you our prayers, the meditations of our hearts, as we lift to you also the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen.
We've rearranged worship just a little bit this morning to accommodate both everybody here and everybody at home. Uh, this is the time during the service that our choir sings, and this morning I believe it's, this is the piece where we have a virtual choir as well as y'all, right? Yeah? So we have a big choir this morning. It's awesome. But this is the time for offering as well. If you're here in person, we have our, our baptismal font at the back that's been converted into an offering coffer. Uh, we have offering plates on the way out. Uh, some of y'all took advantage of that on the way in. You can also give electronically. Your offerings are important. They're important to, to the way that the church functions, to the way that we can do outreach in the world and continue to do the important ministries that God has called us to do. But our offerings are also important to us. Our offerings are our commitment to God and our physical placing our trust in God and our hope in His future. So we invite you to give and to give generously as we continue to worship together.
you ever feel like you have to get your rhythm a little bit? This is, we, so we did, a, I guess a month ago, we, we did rehearsals for this, for reopening the church, and we had a, a small crowd. Some of y'all were here for this. Um, but I got to tell you, it, it, having been more than six months since we've had any congregation of any sort of real size in the sanctuary, uh, it puts us into a different rhythm. So bear with us, bear with me in particular, because I feel like I'm stumbling a little bit this morning. Um, but God's going God's gonna to offer us grace in all this. Um, and, and I think that it pleases God that we are together, that we find ways to be together. Now, last week, if you watched online, we talked about unity. And I used that word at least 752 times in the 25 minutes that I spoke last week. So, we, we talked about unity. We talked about how this is God's will for us, that we would be one people, that, that we would be of one heart and one spirit, that we would be His church. And, and not only is it God's will, but it's important that we are unified, that we are in harmony with one another, because that's when real miracles happen. That's when God's best work comes through God's church. So, we talked about unity, and, and just to kind of highlight the fact that this is God's will, when Jesus shared His Last Supper with His disciples, He prayed. He, you thought I prayed a long prayer this morning. Jesus prayed and prayed and prayed. It's chapters in the book of John, in the gospel of John. And Jesus prayed for His disciples. He prayed for those that, that He could look around the room and see their faces, but then Jesus also prayed for us. And in John 17, beginning in verse 20, Jesus prays this. He says, my prayer, remember Jesus is talking to His heavenly Father, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That's you and me. That all of them may be one. Father, just as you and me, you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete, to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. This is the Word of God for the people of God, and we give thanks as the people of God. Jesus prayed for our unity. Jesus prayed for you and I. Think about that for just a minute. As we come together today for communion, hopefully you got your little communion cup when you came in, and hopefully if you're at home, you're set up for communion at home. Uh, we're going we're gonna to gather together at the table, but the first time that Jesus had communion at the Last Supper that He had with His disciples, He prayed for you and me. He prayed that those of us that come to believe would be unified, specifically that we would have unity. We talked about this last week. We talked about how important this unity is, but today I want to backtrack just a little bit, and I want to talk a little bit more about the disunity, the present circumstances that I believe that we live in. We are in a fractured nation, part of a, a broken world. We are, are separated by all sorts of different things. We are separated by race, by creed, by language. We are separated by our bank accounts. We are separated uh, all sorts of different ways. In the last six months, have put that disunity to the test. The last six months have been hard, right? Raise your hand if you believe that the last six months have been hard. I, everybody here just raised a hand. The last, it doesn't matter who you are. This virus and, and the pandemic connected to it and all the other side effects, they've affected all of us, right? Yeah? They, this is something that has hammered us from all sides. The last six months has been hard. And I have to tell you, in the office… And, and the staff may want to amen me or clap on this, but in the office, it's been hard too. They've had to put up with me. <laughs> in the office, we've, the, the staff has worked really hard 
They have faced a whole lot of challenges, and at times, they've had to spend some time out on the ledge. Um, We have all taken a turn, losing our minds just a little bit. The good news is that we never all lose our minds at the same time. One or two of us will go out on the ledge, we will lose our minds, we will lose our cool, we will get a little extra anxious, while the rest of us are, are inside to talk you off the ledge. But then as soon as somebody else comes in, it seems like somebody else goes out. I've spent plenty of my own time out there as well. We've asked questions about how on earth do we do ministry right now in our present circumstances. This is the first Sunday in over six months that, that I've seen some of your faces. And even though you're behind masks, I just know that you're all smiling. You're grinning from ear to ear this morning, right? Because we're, we're together. We might not be as close together as we want to be, but we're together. But for six months, we've been asking the question, how do we do ministry? How do you do ministry to a toddler online? Ooh. And then you throw in the fact that so many of us are ADHD, and, and it's been a, a hard battle. We've, on top of trying to figure out how to do ministry now, we've been trying to figure out how are we going to do ministry then, when all this is over, when the world has changed so drastically, and we can't quite go back to the way that things were. Now, everybody has an opinion about this, so the other thing that we've been dealing with is criticism. I'm, hear me, I'm not whining. This is not me whining. But we've been dealing with criticism in the office. We have all heard, and many of you have heard in in your lives too, we've all heard that we're doing it all wrong, that we're either moving too fast or we're moving too slow. And it's caused a lot of stress, and it's caused some anxiety, and it's made things a little bit harder. Now, I don't suppose that either I or the staff have any unique concern or that we deserve any special treatment because we're all dealing with hard times. We're all fighting hard battles. You all raised your hands when you said the last six months have been hard. The whole world is hurting. The whole world is struggling. Some Some have lost jobs. Some have lost identity. Some are trying desperately to figure out what their new identity will be in a new world. We are grateful to have good work still to do. And in all of this, in all of this hardship, in all of this, we have all heard the statement, we're all in this together. Now, when when I say those words, we're all in this together, Tell me how you feel about that. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down about that statement. Do you feel like we're all in this together? <laughs> Some of y'all do. Here's, the, here's what I can tell you is I've heard the statement, we're all in this together, right? You've heard that statement before. And the truth is that we are all in this. We are all in this, right? Give me a thumbs up if you agree with that, okay? We're all in this. Whether we like like it or not, there is nowhere that we can go to escape it except for Antarctica, and you thought it was cold here this morning. We're all in this. But most of us hear that statement, we're all in this together, and we find the statement almost reprehensible because we're all in this, but the whole together part is the thing that we struggle with. Are we really in this together? Because the world seems to be more and more broken by the day. We seem to be creating more and more division and come together less and less. We're not unified, not as Americans, not as Christians, not as human beings, despite it being the will of God. Togetherness denotes that we have some sort of unity or harmony. It it means that we're pulling together in the same direction towards a common goal as a team or as a family. We're not, and I believe that this makes our situation harder. The pandemic has shed a light on what's real. It has shown us where a lot of things in our world, good and bad, have, have not been real. It has shown us what has been solid and everlasting also. 
It's shown us who we can count on and who we can't. Hardship has a way of revealing that kind of truth. And yet God calls us to be unified. In Ephesians chapter 4, Paul writes these words. It's at the very beginning of the chapter. He says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. This, too, is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I think Paul uses the word one as many times as I used the word unity last week. It's almost a broken record, but it drives the point home, doesn't it? One of the hardest things about living together in community, and the people in Ephesus in Paul's time knew this, one of the hardest things about living together in community and finding this sense of unity is working with different personalities, different opinions, and different ideas. I don't think we're any different today, right? You agree? We all have different personalities, different opinions, different ideas. But God puts us together, and part of the beauty of God putting us together is that we come with all these different personalities and gifts and ideas, and together when we find unity and we find harmony, we find God's will for us. We find God's vision for our lives as well as for the church and for the world. That diversity is important. Differences, though, in style or vision have pulled many Christian communities apart across the centuries. But Paul reminds followers of Christ that unity is one of the purposes of the church. And even Jesus, in his prayer that we read earlier, Jesus, uh, Jesus alludes to the fact that because we're unified, because we have harmony with each other, the world sees that and the world finds hope in that. Biblical commentator David Guzik says, a worthy walk before God will be marked by lowliness and gentleness, not a pushy desire to defend our own rights and advance our own agenda. And I think this idea of of approach, this, this tact that we take together as the church is the difference between unity and disunity. I mentioned last week, and and I did a wedding yesterday, and I I told the couple this, weddings are not 50-50 propositions. It's a 100-100 proposition. It means that when you marry a, a man or a woman, you, for the rest of your life, you look to their needs more than you look to your own. You give 100% to them. And the church is meant to be this way as well. Not that we come in and look for our own needs. Not that we come in and look for our own desires or our own taste, but instead that we come together as the community of God, seeking to enrich the lives of others. The shift to online worship has reminded many of us of the need to meet in person as a Christian community. The shift to online worship, thank God for technology. Let me say that first of all, because without technology, we would have been completely and totally dead in the water for the last six months. For the last six months, we wouldn't have been able to get God's Word out. And I've asked myself repeatedly, what if this had happened in the 1980s? What would we we have done then before the advent of the Internet so readily available in the world? While we can attend church online, though, it's still a disembodied experience with no physical presence together. And we've all hungered for that. I think God has has built us so that we want to be together. Despite how much comfort we may find in attending church in our pajamas or in no pants at all, at least so I'm told, we still long to be together. We still want to have days like this where we can, we can look around and we can see other people, where we can remember just how uncomfortable these pews really are, right? 
Christ came in the flesh. And the church is the physical embodied proof of Christ to the world. Now, I can see. We, we, we talked about vision over the last few weeks. I can see God's vision. I can walk around the hallways of this church when it is completely empty and the lights are turned off and all you can hear is the wind blowing outside. I can walk around this church, though, and I can see the faces of children running up and down the halls. And yes, I know you're not supposed to run in church, but right now at this point, if the kids wanted to run down the halls, I'd let them. <laughs> Lens back there giving me thumbs up. I can walk through these halls and see the ministry that God wants to, wants to happen here. This is not a building that's just simply meant to be preserved, that it's, it's, meant, to, it's meant to be used. This is a tool for the way that we can be the church to the world. I can ride through the community and I can, I can envision what God sees and the lives that need to be changed and the, the bridges that need to be built, the relationships that need to be created. I can see the things that God is trying to do in the world. And it all comes down to whether or not you and I are together. Unity is the essential ingredient to all this. Now, we're still restricted in the ways that we can get together. You can see that today. Everybody's wearing a mask in here but me right now, and I'll put mine back on in a minute. But are we going to be the people that give in? Are we going to be the people that allow all of these restrictions to stop us from fulfilling our calling? Or are we going to be the people that overcome? Are we going to be the people that, that create and invent as our Heavenly Father creates? Are we going to be the people that adapt and overcome? Are we going to be the ones that find the way that can be all in this together? I'm going to invite you to be defiant. Don't be defiant of the CDC. Don't do that. They might actually know what they're talking about sometimes. But instead, defy the voices that separate us. Defy the voices that are in every commercial right now. You know who they are. Defy the voices that point to other brothers and sisters and say, you're not like them. Defy the voices that are on social media right now that want us to be separate and not together. Defy the voices that that destroy our unity and instead say, that's not us, because we're all with Jesus. We're all in this together. Be defiant. Defy the pride that keeps you self-focused. And let's come together around the message of Christ. Unified community takes time. It has taken six months to reveal how unified we were or were not. And it has broken down some of the unity that we've had. It's going to take us some time to rebuild our harmony, our unity, to come back together the way that we're meant to be. But I believe it can happen. I am committed to it. Lori is committed to it. Our staff is committed to it. Our lay leadership is committed to it. Are you committed to it? Are those of y'all watching at home, are y'all committed to it? Will we find ways to overcome and to be together? Today is World Communion Sunday. In just a minute, we're going to celebrate communion. You've got time at home, if you're not here with us today, you've got time at home to run to the pantry and to, to grab something that will suffice as communion elements if you haven't already set up for communion. World Communion Sunday comes around the first Sunday of October, and we've been celebrating World Communion Sunday now for 80 straight years, since 1940. Churches around the world, churches regardless of denomination, have been celebrating this holy sacrament. And it's a reminder of what makes us one church, one community, one body under the lordship of Christ. It's a reminder of Paul's words to the church in Ephesus that this is the table, this is the meal that brings us together.
Unity through community is essential to breaking down barriers and promoting the gospel to a world that is fragmented and rife with division. So today, as we celebrate the sacrament, as we partake in the body and the blood of Christ, we leave from this holy meal as one. Let us pray. God, you have made us beautiful and unique. The psalmist sings that you knit us together in our mother's womb, that before the world saw us, you saw us. And though we are unique, though we all have our own personality and ideas and opinions and gifts, you have made us to complement each other. You have made us to enhance each other. And when we are together, you have, by your Spirit, given us a synergy that can move mountains and change worlds. God, use this time, as we so often pray, use this time to draw us closer to you and closer to one another. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. This creation still is. It was mentioned to me that a lot of churches have a unity pledge. And as, as I thought about this, it's one where all the members agree that we will strive to live lives in unity. And I got to thinking about it. We have a unity pledge. We have membership vows. When you join a United Methodist Church, you promise to be faithful to what God is doing through the ministries of Kennesaw United Methodist Church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. And all of that is reliant on our unity. It's been suggested a couple of times that we emphasize that as we come back together, that we renew our vows together. That's something I want to invite you to pray about as we continue to gather in worship, as we continue to gather around the table, and as we strive to find new ways to serve God in the world. For now, we're going to sing a little bit more. We've got a little bit more music. We've gone a little bit longer this, this week, but that's okay. We're still under an hour, right? April's going to lead us in singing. for those of you who are here. But don't sing. <laughs> I want you to know you've made my day. You have come and you have worshiped. Those of you who are at home, you have made my day as well. We are glad to, to be together as God's church. And our prayer is that we wouldn't just be together, but that we would be together, that we would be unified, that we would be in harmony with one another, and that the world would see that 
as our witness to the love of Christ. So, as you go today, show people how you can smile with your eyes and reach out to somebody that you haven't talked to in a while, maybe in six months, and let them know that they are loved by God. Go in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.